everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Watcher of Realms. For today's video, we're gonna go through and do a proper hero guide on Hatsa. A lot of people just got her thanks to the recent 10 times and 2 times event at the same time. And well, I'm sure she's changing a lot of people's accounts. Very well. Welcome to the realm of the dead. Oh, I wouldn't do that. favorite marksman, our arena queen, our, I guess, another jack of all trades. Kind of like how I really love Arrogance for his diverse kit and ability to be used everywhere. She is kind of one of those as well. She can be used in every area of the game, probably except late stages of, I guess, artifact material raid where you really need a healer on that one platform or late stage guild boss you wouldn't be using her but to be honest even somewhere like guild boss where you think you need a little bit of a different team synergy and you're like oh she does aoe we don't really want that well if she's one of your best damage dealers on your account and some of your best gear you're probably gonna find her performing pretty well in guild boss plus when we take a look at her she has well the nightmare faction which is really good for guild boss as well so hey the extra boost from Wrath or Torador, I mean, definitely not a bad thing. So if you haven't tried her on your guild boss because you just think she's not fit there, trust me, you might be a little bit surprised. Personally, I'm still using my Comet in my guild boss just because he's in some of my best gear. And I feel like he does some decent damage, not the best, but better than some of my others would do that are maybe technically more ideal for guild boss, but ones I haven't built up yet. She is definitely one of those. So, of course, let's go quickly through her kit, but let's do it in a fun way. Let's first use the in-game references because, you know what, there's so many tools in this game and I kind of want to make sure everyone's aware of the tools. So I click off. When you're on a PC, it pops up into a, a website here, but when you're on your phone, it just opens within the game. But there's this wonderful in-game reference. Now, I was a slacker. I didn't get around to doing an early hot set guide to get my guide added to this page here, but that's okay. There are some spotlights here where you can see other players' videos. It does show a little bit better on mobile than it does on PC, but hey, it's fine. You can see a few examples of other people doing guides on Hatsa, and you can see the graphic here easily as well. And this is wonderful. I really love this graphic that they give us. It just helps us get a general idea about the hero uh, and just, yeah, helps direct people a little bit. But uh, sometimes I would say based on at least uh, the feedback from people experienced like my bucket or other Forerunner server players, I wouldn't say this is always 100% correct. It might be their game and they know how things should be. But at the end of the day, the way the testing works, it seems like Overall, attack percentage is a little bit more important than crit damage per se, so you don't want to like slack, and we're going to talk about that in a second. So, Hatsa is an all-round marksman with high AoE and burst damage. Aside from her defensibility, her invisibility uh, increases her AoE attack and her survivability. So she has this great invisibility, which really helps in like gear raid 3 the high stages making her a top option for the very end game stages of gear raid 3. of course that's going to be great for arena and pretty much everywhere honestly just another helpful uh, tip here so as we say here her burst damage her ultimate is very it's a very short cooldown dealing insane damage 
high frequent burst damage. Her AoE attack, her, let's see, her basic attack strikes twice, bleh. Her basic attack strikes twice and triggers defense reduction. As the lowest cost AoE marksman, she is efficient in clearing monsters with her bouncing a basic attack in collaboration with her lord. So she kind of has that burst damage, which is AoE, and her um, even her basic attack kind of bounces around to hit multiple enemies as well. And yeah, she is really cheap to place, and I'm finding some fun uses for her um, in a lot of content. Even like Gear Raid 2, definitely in Arena. Um, Gear Raid 3, I found a bit of a quirky spot for using her that I'm trying to progress. Uh, but yeah, when we talk about gear, let's go on to gear. So, Hatsut's basic attack strikes twice and triggers defense reduction, as we already said there. Defense reduction is one of those things I always look for with characters. Um, AoE decreased defense in Rage Shadow Legends was something I was always very high on, and she kind of has that. She, a defense reduction on the enemy allows your entire team to do more damage, not just her. So it kind of makes her a subtle support unit as well to help enable... The rest of your offense to just pump out as much damage as possible. So that's just really good. Uh, we are definitely going to be looking at Soul Bond, Arcana, and Warlord. I agree. If you're at the super end game gear stages, but I'm not there yet personally. I don't have that red gear, so we're not going to be talking about that today. But I'm going to open up in game and show you guys what I would suggest. It does say crit damage, crit rate attack for the Bengals, Amulets, and Ring. But honestly, I wouldn't go full crit damage. I would definitely say to try to go attack percentage over crit damage in most cases. Still trying to get like 90-100% crit rate, but don't put crit damage as the main stat on all your pieces or else you're actually going to be hurting yourself. You really want to make sure her attack, her total attack is pretty high. So that's just something to look at. You're always looking for your secondaries. Crit damage, crit rate, attack overall, and attack speed for sure. Um, Nether Messenger is definitely a good one for her if you're only dealing with like one enemy, like Guild Boss or something. But I would say this is not her best artifact by far. So I will open up in game to give some other suggestions. Um, She's definitely going to be good in Gear Raid 3 as we talked about already. Defeating flying units is the key to passing gear rate 3. Her basic attack with defense reduction and her ultimate makes her very efficient against those flying units. Void Rift. Very hard content, right? Um, survivability is not easy, so that invisibility, making her untargetable, is a huge help. Uh, so if she doesn't have the protection of a healer, she can kind of survive a bit longer than she should. And of course, she has good burst damage to help take out the enemies. And Arena is huge. I mean, Hatsa is so cheap to place, so it makes her being able to go in there with top tier damage very early on helps you to get ahead in battle. If she's your first or second unit placed, it's really going to be great to pump out some big damage. She's just very versatile, as this says. You can kind of use her everywhere. Like I said, performs well in campaign, in raids like Gear Raid 2 as well. She could be your main de uh, damage dealer on that top spot in Gear Raid 2, or someone you swap in. If you have trouble keeping everyone alive, you can definitely use her there. So that's kind of what we're talking about here, mostly. Gear Raid um, 2, she'd be the main DPS. But if you have two DPSs that you swap in and out, depending on... Um, when the bosses are doing their smashes, if you're recalling a lot, or if they die, uh, she can be one of those two DPS that you're using to kind of alternate. Uh, Gear Raid 1, she does do some AoE damage, so you probably could put her on one of the top corner spots, as long as you have a good healer on her. Although she does have invisibility again, so she stays alive pretty well. But, I would say once you get to the stage 19, 20, 21, she's probably going to fall off a bit. Because there are a lot of the um, ha uh, heavy armor units. Let's see, where are they? This one. The giant skeleton shielders. Once these guys come out, you're going to have a hard time taking out heavy armor units with uh, marksmen. But it doesn't mean you can't use them for maybe even 19 in all of the earlier stages. You can definitely get away with using her there gear raid at three i'm actually having some fun using her so why don't i go ahead in and show you how i started to play around and test her um 
I haven't perfected this battle. I get really close, but I'm just going to quickly show you kind of my go in strategy that I really think is going to work pretty well. So like I lead in with Setrum because he has such good coverage. That works great. And then I go ahead in and place Dolores to boost Setrum. And then because her cost is so cheap and she has the invisibility, we can actually put her up here to this spot that you wouldn't normally put someone because they die very quickly. You can put her up here and she right away starts attacking. And look how quickly, boom, instantly, instantly her dang ultimate is ready. And she just blasted and destroyed that enemy. So you can leave her up there and she can sit there and take out whoever's next. But yeah, I'm not going to worry about actually completing this run but you see look at how great that start was that was such a smooth quick start if i was starting to place some other units or if i recalled her to get some cost back so i could quickly have placed my silas here and then continued onward it could have been possible although i do really like keeping her on that spot to take out that enemy for a bit but i don't know if it works for the whole round but I did want to point out using her maybe in that spot as a strategy. I'm sure she could work in these other spots too because she just does such good burst damage. The second the enemies get close, they're going to be destroyed. But I really found a surprising use for her there. And it's something that I'm kind of working on perfecting. But gear raid 19 is hard. So I kind of expected it to be a challenge and my gear is not the best. I'm really trying to get... That better gear so as they mentioned soulbound arcana is probably one of the best options for her which after the ultimate is cast damage increases by 10 percent permanently stacking up to five times so just getting a permanent damage boost so i guess what is that 50 percent up to five times uh that that's pretty good right <laughs> pretty good bonus damage toward the end of battles the later you get in the battle the more damage she's gonna do not so bad uh, and she comes back to her ultimate so quickly, it makes her quite valuable. I think, oh, here it is. Uh, wisdom as well. After using the ultimate, skills increase damage by 35% for 10 seconds. So Wisdom is kind of the budget version of Soul Bond Arcana. So definitely a good choice. If you don't have the red sets yet, I would probably try to go with this one. If you are trying to piece together a set. But at the end of the day, stats over sets and you're still going to do a lot better. Um, the other set that she's good with would probably be... Night Terror increases damage by 25% for 3 seconds after making crit hits because she is someone you're going to want to have some good crit rate on. So she should be critting pretty frequently. So this is definitely a good set as well. When you're talking about the damage sets, of course you're just going to want the attack speed and attack percentage Warlord one eventually once you get there. But before that, you're just going to go Calamity and get the basic strong attack percentage boost. So that's kind of covering her gear. But let's go in here and actually look at her skills a little bit more individually. I'm also going to go ahead and take a look. So her her um her basic stats are pretty good. They're typical for marksmen. Marksmen have such low attack compared to some others, but that is what it is. Her cost is 12, which is just so good. It's crazy. And that really really helps. So she's got um, attack speed, everyone has that 100, uh, uh, auto regen, 14, not so bad. Um, but yeah, I love her so far. She is so much fun. And mine is far from perfect. I do have her in a wisdom set, but crit rate, attack, and attack here. I don't have much crit damage on her because I just don't have the right stats for it, honestly. Uh, I'm really struggling personally to get... Like the idea of the perfect like attack percentage, crit damage, attack percentage, or, you know, two attack percentage, one crit damage, but getting crit rate through only substats. I'm just not getting those crit rate rolls overall to be able to put multiple people in that kind of gear, or at least in a set that makes sense for her. I didn't really like the set that I could make that happen with. So I did actually kind of go with prioritizing attack on her. So she does have a pretty good boosted attack here. She's got um, 13... 13,000 attack, which could definitely be better at the end of the day. But remember, marksman attack is a bit lower base, so it's harder to get that stat up. But mine is a far from perfect, but again, just focus attack percentage, try to get the crit rate through substats, and ideally have one of these units be maybe a crit damage to get some higher crit damage than what I've got right now. But take what you can get, and she's still going to be pretty good either way. We also should talk about artifacts. So I have her in Toriel's Gaze just because I have nothing. Um, actually, I have 
my Cetrum and Nether Messenger because he's kind of my guy that takes out that guild boss shield. So I think this is more important to have him in this. Although, depending on the battle, I could probably try that on her. But I don't really think that's the best option overall, honestly. I'm kind of surprised that that is the one they suggest. But let me pull up the artifacts so we can take a look. If you come here in the Forge, you can check the preview and see all the artifacts in the game. Now, she is going to be great for this guy here. Oh man, this is such a good one for her. Increases damage by 5. After killing the target, increases an additional damage of 5%, stacking up to 2 times. This effect lasts for 10 seconds. So if you're doing something where she's killing the enemies, killing targets, like not a single target thing, like you're not really going to use her in much in Guild Boss once you're endgame, but if you are using her in Guild Boss early on, keep in mind that she's probably not going to be best in this artifact. Although this can be really good for Arena or anything where you're killing multiple enemies. It's a very strong artifact for her. Uh, I think Blood Bond Signet should be pretty good as well. It's just, it does sacrifice some HP to increase crit damage. But just a basic boom of some crit damage could definitely be helpful. Um, I think, you know, I really like, where is it? Sharpshooter's Crest as well. When there are no enemies within one tile, AoE damage is increased by 20%. Which is so weird because it's like when there are no enemies. But they have, she has a tight range, so it can be a little bit hard for that to be the case. But if you can pop her ultimate right before the enemies actually approach, so they're not really right up close on top of her, this can be pretty good too for some extra bonus AoE damage. But it's probably not ideal because she doesn't have crazy range um, regarding her ultimate. I don't know that that's the best artifact for her, but if you're kind of desperate, it might be good. And of course, don't forget about one of our new favorite artifacts. Thanks to Ma Bucket doing some great testing and realizing how good this is on pretty much everyone. Ancestral Teachings, if you can get some of these leveled up and built up like I'm in the process of doing right here, as you can see... This is just going to be great on any damage dealer or someone like Dolores that needs lots of attack. Solid piece. And honestly, once you get this fully promoted, it's going to be wonderful. You'll have that extra within two tiles range. So if there's no one next to her within one tile, if someone's next to her within two tiles, she'll increase her range by or attack by 16%. That's very strong as well. So I really think this is pretty solid. 16% attack just on top of her her total attack is just so good. And um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my Bucket's YouTube channel. He has a really good video talking about what he said, maybe the best artifact in the game, so to speak. And as he's going through the different classes, he's talking about, sh well, he's showing his damage results for different classes and different artifacts, including Ancestral Teaching in that data, which has been really fun to see, so... Props to him and credit where credit is due. He's doing a really good job looking at some stuff that might not have been as obvious from the start. I'm probably going to try to get one for someone even like her. Uh, right now, I've had Turiel's gaze on her just for some extra uh, crit, but the idea of... Oh, sorry, not crit. Because we're critting, being able to ignore defense is such a good, good skill. You know, like a savage set from Raid as we love. Ignoring 30% of the target's defense is going to be pretty helpful against higher level enemies it might not be as good in a little bit more casual stuff but with low mobs but hey it's something and right now i have very limited artifacts for my marksmen so i'll take what i can get all right so let's actually just talk about her in every other area of the game promotion raid is a is obvious anyone that's top tier is gonna make their promotion raids easy extreme should be easy clap Again, Guild Boss, she can certainly be used if she's one of your best damage dealers, just period. Whether she's AoE or not isn't going to make a difference. She is really good, and you might be surprised that she actually does some pretty good damage in Guild Boss. Just test it, see what happens. Um, take out your lowest damage dealer, put her in instead, and see how you do. You might be surprised. She does synergize with the Nightmare Faction, allowing you to have four heroes with that synergy is really useful. Um, of course, Tide, anyone can kind of be used there. And resource raids, um, not necessarily the best for those, but of course she could be used. But she kind of has a strange range when her ultimate goes out. So there's probably better people to use for that. And those are really easy, so that shouldn't be too much of a challenge. 
And of course, the faction. She's going to be a monster for the Nightmare faction, adding a ton of extra damage around all those fighters that you probably have placed. So top tier for faction trials as well. But let's also talk about another place she's top tier, Arena. If you go through Arena and you're seeing all the people in Overlord, which I need to get myself back into, <laughs> you're going to see hot sits everywhere. But let me just go ahead in here. I'm going to show you my auto fight. I've been doing pretty well with this one. So I kind of use her, even though this is like the single target DPS, I use her in every single arena now. No regrets. So I bring in my Wrath and he just stalls the enemy and starts doing some pretty solid damage. And then I stick her on the corner. So in her, she comes to her ultimate so fast that she just destroys the enemy before the other enemy has even had a chance to place their other damage dealers. It's just such a good combination. She's so quick. And then I bring out my other marksman. He starts popping pretty quick with his attack speed, going crazy. She gets back to her ultimate so fast that she's able to use it really quickly on the enemy too. And it's just a fun thing to watch. She is a huge help. Now, I think my MVP is going to be Wrath. He's the one taking the brunt of stalling the enemies. He's doing constant damage to the enemy as well from the start. So I think Wrath is kind of my MVP for this. But I'm pretty sure she's second in damage. So I'll let this battle finish and I'll show you guys my damage results. But I'm having fun with Hotsit so far. I have not perfected my Gear Raid 3 strategy I'm like so close yet so far away, I swear. Uh, maybe just a few more gear changes and I'll be there. I just need to pump out a little more damage. But she's definitely a queen in so many areas of the game. And Arena's definitely one of them. <laughs> so yeah, as you can see, Wrath is my main damage dealer by far. But there she is right behind him. Second best there. Um, even a set from my place pretty late, so that's why it doesn't really help much. But still helps a little bit, I guess. I probably could place someone else like Silas instead of Cetrum that doesn't have that downtime when he has to self-repair. But I'm really loving this little team here for Arena. She's cheap to place. We've got my um my lovely Chaos Dominion dude who's got the cheap arena cost. I love Sargak, he's cool. But I'm yeah, I'm really, really loving having Hatsit. I did not expect to get so lucky and get her uh, on my account right away. And I hope you guys are enjoying your Hatsits too if you're watching this video. Hope it was helpful. Just trying to suggest the best gear, the best artifacts. And yeah, well, we could probably talk about her awakening awakenings briefly. I don't think they're like the most necessary things in the world. Like she's going to be really good even without them. But of course, like this is just extra damage period. That can't be bad. Uh, longer duration for her invisibility is really helpful. And then of course here, another um, another extra timing for this extra burst damage. Sorry, another extra second for the extra burst damage. Okay as well. Um, penetration increase and basic attack um, added as well, which is good for her being a marksman with low base attack. But of course, if you get some dupes of Hatsu and you max out her awakenings, don't be mad. It's just making one of the best heroes in the game even better. And yeah, I wouldn't mind getting some myself now, honestly. But she's been amazing. A fun addition to my roster. Hope you guys feel the same. I hope you guys all got some hot sits. And if you tried and failed, well, I wish you all the success during our next two times event. And I'll see you in the next video.